Police say they still don't know a motive, but in addition to being an Army veteran and linked to America's neo-Nazi white power world. This afternoon determined that Mr. Fields deserved to spend the rest of his life in federal prison. Accused killer Curtis Allgaier pleaded guilty in court to killing a prison guard back in 2007. Oh, you may be seeing did. me crying, but these are tears of joy yeah. to see my son's name up there. But I forgive you. And have rescue on your soul. Racist chained James Bird Jr. to the back of a truck and dragged him along a road outside Jasper, Texas. A couple of survivors testified uh, you could hear sobbing in the courtroom. Some people had to leave the courtroom. Number five, Wade Michael Page. Wade Michael Page was an American white supremacist and musician. On August 5, 2012, Page committed a heinous act of violence when he opened fire at a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin slaying six people and injuring several others before taking his own life. Page was a U.S. Army veteran who had served from 1992 to 1998. He was associated with white supremacist and neo-Nazi groups and had a history of promoting racist ideologies. Investigations into his background revealed that he had connections with various extremist organizations and participated in white power music scenes. Would have gone through his mind for him to do something like this. Police say they still don't know a motive, but in addition to being an army veteran and linked to America's neo-Nazi white power world. Violent uh, genre of rock and roll and boil down to a word, uh, it's genocide. Following the attack, law enforcement authorities conducted an investigation into Page's background and possible motives. While the precise reasons for his actions were not conclusively determined, it was widely believed that his extreme ideologies and hatred towards minority communities, particularly Sikhs, played a significant role. Page had also recently left his job and lost his girlfriend and was clearly very disturbed. I don't know if the military was good for him. I don't know. My heart's broken for the people. Number four, James Alex Fields Jr. James Alex Fields Jr., an avowed white supremacist, was sentenced to life plus 419 years on federal hate crime charges for deliberately driving his car into anti-racism protesters during a white nationalist rally in Virginia. The 22-year-old received the sentence for slaying one person and injuring dozens during the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville on August 12, 2017. Fields was sentenced to life in prison on 29 federal hate crime charges. Judge Richard Moore followed a state jury's recommendation in handing down the sentence. Under state law, he was allowed to go lower than the recommendation, but not higher. Fields kept a photo of Adolf Hitler on his bedside table and drove from his home in Maumee, Ohio to attend the rally, which drew hundreds of white nationalists to Charlottesville to protest the planned removal of a statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. The event also drew counter-protesters who demonstrated against the white nationalists. Violent skirmishes between the two sides prompted police to declare an unlawful assembly and to order the groups to disband before the rally could even begin. Later that day, Fields plowed his car into a crowd of counter-protesters, slaying Heather Heyer, 32, and injuring more than two dozen others. The event stirred racial tensions around the country. President Donald Trump sparked controversy when he blamed the violence at the rally on both sides, a statement that critics saw as a refusal to condemn racism. Then, Fields admitted to deliberately driving his car into counter-protesters who showed up to demonstrate against the white nationalists. I apologize for the hurt and loss I've caused, he said, later adding, every day I think about how things could have gone differently and how I regret my actions. I'm sorry. Killing Heather Heyer, this morning he received a life sentence. Resources of the federal government to prosecute hate-inspired violence wherever it occurs. Fields is the man who drove a car through the counter protests at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville back in 2017. This afternoon determined that Mr. Fields deserved to spend the rest of his life in federal prison. His comment came after more than a dozen survivors and witnesses delivered emotional testimonies about the physical and psychological wounds they received. Number three, Curtis Algier. Curtis Michael Algier is an American white supremacist skinhead who is being held in the Utah State Prison in Draper, Utah for a horrific slaying. Algier's criminal history began in 1998 with convictions for theft and reckless driving in South Dakota. He was charged with felony burglary, forgery, and theft in Utah in October 2000 after he burglarized a neighbor's apartment 
and made out a stolen check to himself for $300. That month, he was also charged in another county with carrying a concealed handgun and sentenced to 180 days and probation. Algier fled Utah in August 2001, which led to a 1 to 15 year sentence. Resolve the case the day after it happened. He obviously he wanted it to be fair to him and fair to the Anderson family. Accused killer Curtis Allgaier pleaded guilty in court to killing a prison guard back in 2007. Disarming a peace officer, aggravated escape, aggravated robbery, and possessing a dangerous weapon. Paroled in May 2003, he was then arrested and sent back to prison in July 2004 for traveling to California without authorization and possessing two knives. He was paroled in October 2006. In November, he became a fugitive for two days on a parole violation. Algier, armed, barricaded himself inside a hotel room, but was captured by a Salt Lake City SWAT team. But the Anderson found them for their loss, and uh, I'm going to miss Curtis. It's not always perfect, but in this case, in this family's needs, I believe justice has been served. After falling through the ceiling where he had tried to hide. On June 14, 2007, he was sentenced to 104 months in prison for being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm. On the morning of June 25, 2007, corrections officer Stephen Anderson escorted Algier to the University of Utah, where Algier was scheduled for an MRI because he had been complaining of back problems. While waiting with Anderson in an examination room at the university's orthopedic center, Algier was unshackled. He then overpowered and disarmed Anderson and shot him once in the chest and once in the head. Algier later stated that the gun went off accidentally during the struggle. After fleeing the clinic on foot, Algier carjacked a Ford Explorer and led police on a high-speed chase, after which he was caught. He pled guilty to the slaying charges and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Number 2. John William King John William King, an avowed racist who orchestrated the slaying of James Byrd Jr. in one of America's most gruesome hate crimes of the latter 20th century, was fatally punished in 2019 in Texas. King, 44, was pronounced deceased by lethal injection at the Texas State Penitentiary at Huntsville. Asked whether he had a final statement, King said, no, and then wrote out a single sentence statement reading, capital punishment, them without the capital get the punishment, the spokesman said. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito denied a last-minute application for a stay of punishment, which delayed the punishment by about an hour. Gathering here in Jasper at the small park named for Bird to remember the man and to share their pain. You may be seeing me crying, but these are tears of joy to see my son's name up there. John William King is set to be executed tonight in Huntsville, convicted of a gruesome murder that many have called a modern-day lynching. King was the ringleader of a group that chained Bird, 49, who was African-American, to the back of a 1992 Ford pickup and dragged him to his demise over nearly three miles in the woods outside Jasper, Texas, on June 7, 1998. The men left Bird's mangled body by a roadside. Bird's slaying shocked the nation and put a harsh light on race relations in the small town on the Louisiana border. King, who has never shied from his racist beliefs, had hateful tattoos on his body including one with a black person hanging by a noose from a tree, Nazi symbols, and the words Aryan pride. Lou Von Bird Harris, Bird's younger sister, said King's demise at the end of a syringe paled in comparison to the unspeakable terror and pain her brother felt as he was being slain. She said, all they are going to do is go to sleep, but half the things they did to James, all the suffering he had to go through, they still get an easy way out to me one of eight children of a school teacher and a Baptist deacon, his family life revolving around church and music. Racist chained James Bird Jr. to the back of a truck and dragged him along a road outside Jasper, Texas. Number one, Dylan Roof. An unrepentant Dylan Roof was sentenced to his demise for fatally shooting nine black church members during a Bible study session, becoming the first person given a fatal punishment for a federal hate crime. A jury deliberated for about three hours before returning with the decision, capping a trial in which the 22-year-old, avowed white supremacist, did not fight for his life or show any remorse. He served as his own attorney. The slain included the Reverend Clementa Pinckney, the church pastor and a state senator, as well as other pillars of the community, a high school track coach, the church sexton, a librarian, and an aspiring poet. They all shared deep devotion to the church, known as Mother Emmanuel, 
and pass that faith along to their families, many of whom offered Roof forgiveness when he appeared in court just days after the attack. But I forgive you. Your soul. A couple of survivors testified uh, you could hear sobbing in the courtroom. Some people had to leave the courtroom. Mr. Roof, you're charged with nine counts of murder and one count of possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime. Horrific for these families having to relive the last awful moments in the lives of their loved ones. As Roof spoke for about five minutes, every juror looked directly at him. A few nodded as he reminded them that they said during jury selection they could fairly weigh the factors of his case. Only one of them, he noted, had to disagree to spare him from a lethal injection. I have the right to ask you to give me a life sentence, but I'm not sure what good it would do anyway, he said. When the verdict was read, he stood stoic. Several family members of the victims wiped away quiet tears. Roof told FBI agents when they arrested him after the June 17, 2015 slayings that he wanted the shootings to bring back segregation or perhaps start a race war. Instead, the slayings had a unifying effect, as South Carolina removed the Confederate flag from its state house for the first time in more than 50 years. Other states followed suit, taking down Confederate banners and monuments. Roof had posed with the flag in photos. Malcolm Graham, whose sister Cynthia Heard was slain, said the jury made the right decision. Roof specifically selected Emanuel A.M.E. Church, the South's oldest black church, to carry out the cold, calculated slaughter. Assistant U.S. Attorney Jay Richardson said. The 12 people he targeted opened the door for a stranger with a smile, he said. Three people survived the attack. The gunman sat with the Bible study group for about 45 minutes. During the final prayer, when everyone's eyes were closed, he started firing. He stood over some of the fallen victims, shooting them again as they lay on the floor. The jury convicted Roof of all 33 federal charges he faced, including hate crimes. He never explained his actions to jurors, saying only that anyone who hates anything in their mind has a good reason for it. Roof insisted that he was not mentally ill and did not call any witnesses or present any evidence. After he was sentenced, Roof asked a judge to appoint him new attorneys, but the judge said he was not inclined to do so because they had performed admirably. That's all for today, folks. We'll see you next time.